So what are some of the biggest successes that you guys have had? Yeah, so I, I think that among our biggest successes, I just want to, one of the things that we're very, very proud of um, is our ability to use data mm -hmm. to actually identify mm -hmm. who the complex patients are. So we have what's called a health information exchange, okay. and that was developed in 2002. So imagine the world before Epic mm -hmm. and Cerna and the ability of health systems to actually be able to share data with each other. Mm -hmm. So in, in, at that time in 2002, we knew that we needed to look and see where our patients had been. Mm -hmm. We also needed to see was there a provider in the Camden region who they might have had a good relationship with and for some reason things dropped off? Mm -hmm. Maybe they no longer had uh, transportation mm -hmm. to get to that provider. And so we actually, with all the health systems in the area, created a health information exchange mm -hmm. so that we get on a daily basis all of the information from the local hospitals on who's been admitted and who's in the ER. It's incredible. And we use that information in a process that we call triage. And mm -hmm. so right you know, around the corner from where we're sitting now is my team that's actually looking at who was admitted in mm -hmm. Camden, who's in the ER, mm -hmm. and which of those patients are actually the patients that are complex in a way that we could help navigate them mm -hmm. and help provide care management to them. So we've gotten very good at knowing which are the patients that maybe hospitals have programs for already, mm -hmm. and so they don't, they don't need the type of care navigation we have, and which are the patients are the patients that are more likely to be able to benefit from that. Our definition of complex care is patients who have both health complexity and social complexity. Mm -hmm. So the health complexity is usually a couple of chronic conditions. Mm -hmm. um, and then the um, social complexity is anything from poverty, homelessness, um, um, lack of access around transportation, language barriers, um, uh, substance use disorders, behavioral health issues. Mm -hmm. So the chronic conditions, we're looking at sort of the physical health chronic conditions, mm -hmm. but then we're looking at other social complexities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And I would imagine in, in a city like Camden, there is not a shortage of complex patients that for the team to, to focus on. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there isn't. I mean, Camden is a town that um, has a lot of people who are eligible for Medicaid, mm -hmm. a lot of amazing people, I have to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's one thing, I... Um, and there's so many things I've taken away in the short amount of time that I've been here, but that Camden is a really spirited place mm -hmm. um, with a lot of very hardworking people, many hardworking people who aren't really making enough money mm -hmm. to be able to take care of themselves mm -hmm. um, in the best way, but, um, but a lot of people that can, that can benefit from our services. But we are, you know, you know, there are, you know, people who are on Medicaid who are, you know, uh, their health is okay. I mean, the patients that we're looking at are really like the most complex, you know, mm -hmm. people who are sleeping under the bridge at every night, mm -hmm. right? Or um, a pregnant woman who's going shelter to shelter, mm -hmm. right? Those are the people that we're trying to identify mm -hmm. and see if we can actually wrap around care management in a way to help stabilize them and at the same time then help their health. Mm -hmm. Have you found similar challenges from a patient safety perspective for these populations as opposed to maybe something that's outside of Camden? Yeah. So, you know, I think that the, you know, so I was at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia for 10 years. Okay. Um, and certainly patient safety was at the top uh, top of mind. Um, and I spent lots of times in patient safety meetings mm -hmm. in, in, um, in at CHOP um, and patient safety issues in the hospital are different than patient safety issues in people's homes. Sure. Um, for our population in particular, we spend a lot of time on medical reconciliation mm -hmm. and the whole idea of um, when we go into the home, we ask them to sort of show us all the medicines that they have mm -hmm. and really try to figure out like, you know, how do we sort of 
get rid of the medicines they shouldn't be taking mm-hmm. and help them to really just focus on the medicines they should be taking. So that's a major safety issue for us mm-hmm. and one that we attend to with all of our patients. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, medications is such a huge topic in healthcare from from a cost perspective, from the opioid crisis, yep. from not understanding and then having cross um, complications between them. So it's such an area you guys can do such good work in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So tell me some more about the successes that you've had at the coalition. Sure. So um, so we, um, one of the things that we have been able to do um, because we've been working on this care management model for a while is each time we hit a barrier, um, adapt our model to actually be able to address that barrier. So mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. We, our care team is a nurse and a community health worker we found that um, we could help them sort of navigate back to healthcare, um, but that many of them had unstable housing or had housing that wasn't really healthy, Mm -hmm. right? Um, You talk about, you know, kids living in, you know, apartments and it's not good for their asthma, right? We had apartments that might not have been great for them. Maybe they couldn't get around so well in them. And so figuring out housing became um, to us like the single most important priority and so we created a housing first program here within the coalition got the state to give us vouchers um, and you know housed our first patient in november of 2015. Um, one of the things that we found is that we sometimes feel like we have more vouchers than we can use because it's very hard to get landlords to rent to our tenants one of the reasons why it's hard to get them to rent to our tenants sometimes is because of um, municipal fines or um, um, maybe they have old child support that they owe arrears in um, and so even if they got a, a mm-hmm. housing voucher the um, the payment that they have um, there would be some um, basically garnishment of their wages so they couldn't afford it mm-hmm. and so we hit that barrier and decided we need to create a medical legal partnership within the coalition and so we now have a medical legal partnership that works uh, we have a lawyer who works with our care team and when we're thinking about housing or thinking about some other issue, um, the lawyer can actually see, are there you know, old fines that we need to try to get cleared up? You know, are there child support issues that maybe aren't issues anymore because the kids are older and they're doing fine and these are just left over? Um, and can we maybe try to get those reduced or some payment plan so that you, know, you can actually be housed? And so. One of the things that I think is amazing about the coalition, and it's certainly a success, is that we are adapting our model to actually um, address the needs of our patients as they come up. Um, And so that's why we say, you know, we don't think, you know, health, you know, we don't believe health can do it alone. We think we haven't quite figured out the connection between health and social services and how do we really make that work. We know ourselves that we've had to continually add components to our model. Um, And we know that the clients in our perspective and our data who've done best are the ones that we've stabilized like like, like Mm -hmm. that, the ones that we've been able to provide housing to, where we've been able to clear up sort of old legal issues, like they do better. Mm 